Right. Americans carry $870 billion in credit card debt, often at high interest rates, over 20 percent. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democratic senator from New York, Democratic congresswoman, pardon me, from New York, says she wants to solve that for you. In fact, it's easy. A 15 percent cap on interest rates, it's, it's one of those things that sounds radical today, but we had these laws in half of the states in, in, in America up until the 1970s, and they worked. It's really these banks that are trying to push the limit on how much they can extract off of the backs of working people. All right. With that, we bring in Democratic Illinois freshman congressman, member of the House Financial Service Committee, Sean Kasten. Nice to see you, sir, as always. Um, nice you, were a you, C Lena. you were a CEO back in the day. Uh, would you have liked it if the government started regulating how much you could charge your customers, what you could charge them, and how and why? Um, well, look, there's a huge problem in this country with consumer debt and student loan debt, yeah. and I think it's appropriate for us to have that conversation. I'm, I'm generally not a big fan of putting hard caps on, on, on rates because I think that opens up a whole Pandora's box of questions, <laughs> not the least of which is yeah. what, the, you know, what the spread is going to be rather to Treasury rates going in the, in the forward. But I think it's a fair conversation to have, and we've had this conversation yeah. on payday lending about right. does the average consumer understand the full scope of fees that they're charged? And right. there is the headline interest rate, and then there's the, there's yeah, the effective I guess, interest rate. I guess, I guess, those fees I guess this goes back to a, a question, though, that's really becoming a split in the Democratic Party. Is government here to help everybody, or is government here to save everybody from themselves? You seem to be in the camp of the former, but there are so many among, among you of the Democrats who really put it in the ladder of say we're going to you know really interfere in the way that the consumer interacts with american businesses well i i wouldn't characterize this as a split i think you I just think laid there are it a out lot for of people us. no i think i think i think you can have reasonable conversations with people who you know we all want to get to a world where people are not under the burden of consumer debt we may have reasonable differences of opinion about how to get there at the end of the day i i think that government regulation works best when it aligns profit incentives with public purpose. Hmm. There are some who think that we're better off having mandates, and there are some who think that the pursuit of profits is by its nature but, aligned with the public purpose, and that's not always the case. So it's appropriate to try to split that difference. Do you worry about the law of unintended consequences here? You start capping uh, interest rates. The banks have a very simple answer for that, which is we're just not going to lend to the less credit worthy among us. Um, well, look, as I said, there's interest rates and total fees. These are really two separate questions. We, you know, well, we have the, the head of we can the go back. We can go back and play the soundbite from Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. A 15% cap on interest rates. No, I'm saying I'm saying what I said. Okay. What I'm saying is that we had the we had the CPFB in chair before us, and as Katie Porter pointed out, she could not explain how to calculate an APR. The rate that you pay as a consumer is a function of a whole bundle of fees. Interest right. rates are but one in, input to that. And when we are sitting there saying we have an obligation, you know, as Congress to provide oversight, the CPFB has an obligation to protect consumers. Right. And the head of the CPFB has said that she believes her job is to protect both consumers so and So it brings up a reasonable question. Is, is Congress and is uh, the American government doing enough to protect consumers? Here's Tucker Carlson last night on that issue. Take a listen. No doubt many Republicans in the Congress will oppose this bill, if only because of who sponsored it. Bernie Sanders and Ocasio-Cortez are obviously demagogues. But on this one issue, they are absolutely, indisputably right. High interest rates exploit the weak. Credit card debt destroys people. All right, so if credit card debt destroys people, and you mentioned the issue of consumer credit becoming a real issue for people, why not flip this on its head? Should the government then regulate what people are able to buy on credit and say, gee, if you can't afford this new sofa, we're worried about you going into debt, therefore you can't buy it? Well, what I was starting to say before is that we created the CPFB out of Dodd-Frank to make sure that consumers were protected because consumers in general do not have a seat at the table. Under Mick Mulvaney and now under the current chair, the CPFB has, has characterized their role as being to protect consumers and lenders. And as I pointed out to the mm. chair, I do not believe there is a problem in this country with predatory consumers. There is a problem <laughs> with predatory lenders. Well. And we need to make sure that that agency is staffed fulfilling its mission. 
because that agency is not Andrea? fulfilling its mission right now, well, we have a we have a role as Congress to step in and provide more more extensive oversight. And, and, and an interesting point you make, especially when you talk about uh, Mick Mulvaney, now the acting uh, chief of staff there at the White House. Uh, Congressman, appreciate it as always. Enjoy springtime in Chicago. There's a uh, there's no better city for about eight weeks out of the year. Thank you, and happy Mother's Day. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Glad you got that one in. We'll get it in later for you. Thank you.